In the past six weeks or so, sexual harassment charges have taken down Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, now Matt Lauer. All of it feels a bit like a cultural watershed, especially as millions of women have joined in by posting or tweeting the hashtag MeToo. Sexual harassment seems everywhere. It is a problem. Is it just that we're recognizing it for the first time or is something else going on? Could there be something of a moral panic underway? Christina Hoff Summers is resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. In a recent piece for the New York Daily News, she warned that the Me Too phenomenon will soon mutate into a general vilification of all men everywhere. Christina Hoff Summers joins us tonight. Christina, thanks for coming on. Great to be here. So um, I, I assume, I, I know uh, that cases like Harvey Weinstein appall you. You've said that. Yes. Um, but you're saying that this may morph into something different. We have to be careful. It's a very important moment. I think we're watching, a, you know, a, a major cultural shift yes. before our eyes. It's that men and women are rewriting the, the social contract. And it's a, it's a time where we really can kind of bring the workplace up to 21st century standards of dignity and equality. But I see a risk. Uh, I've seen signs of, uh, as you said, a kind of panic around sexuality and particularly a tendency to vilify all men. The fact that some men are predators, it doesn't follow logically that all men are, and yet there's a lot of rhetoric about, you know, trying to implicate all men in, in a pathology. And w what would be the motive behind, I mean, it's prima facie ludicrous because a person commits a crime does not mean all people who look like that person are cap we're going to commit the same crime, obviously. But what do you think is driving claims that all men are to blame? Well, we have in our universities uh, some very hardline gender activists. And I consider myself a feminist. This is not true of all feminists. But there is a school of feminism that is very averse to masculinity. It sees it as, you know, intrinsically pathological and toxic. Right. And the, in the academy, there are a lot of exaggerated statistics about male in, you know, per perfidy and, 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 you know, carrying on um, with these theories about masculinity. And I have seen activists, R Roxanne Gay, for example, wrote in the New York Times that it was, you know, calling for all men to come forth and uh, admit to their, you know, sins, great and small, against women. All men? Not all men. In, in, in the majority of, you know, men of goodwill are going to join with women and, and address this problem. So I, I just draw the line at, at, you know, this male bashing and carrying on. I, there was a, a professor on NPR that thought the, the, the only solution to the harassment problem was to radically transform the way we raise boys. And she had these very extravagant theories about changing how, you know, resource socializing little boys. <laughs> Again, this is, this is an overreaction. Well, I wonder, though, if it even makes sense as a theory. I mean, is the idea that American men have just gotten a lot more masculine in recent years, and this is an outgrowth of that? Does anybody argue that? I mean, that seems the implication, but it seems like crazy. You know, any theory <laughs> that's going to target half the human race uh, is bound to fail. But this is, uh, this is what we see. It's very common in the university to treat, you know, men as um, almost the enemy. And again, this is not typical of feminism everywhere, but in the academy, right. this is being taught. And I now see these professors coming forth, and you know their theories are in in, in the air. And I've seen uh, a willingness to sacrifice innocent people because we, when you, when we remind people of the importance of the presumption of innocence and being careful about false accusation. Um, there have been uh, some activists who said, well, wh who cares if some innocent people yeah. go down? Uh, we've interviewed you know, them. Right. Yeah. And so that sort of attitude worries me. And it's, it's going terrifying. to harm a good cause. Because if we, if we can not allow you know, various groups with strange agendas to hijack this, this right. issue, we can actually address it and maybe improve I hope the that, I hope that happens. Christina, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you.